Hey everyone, this is Ross Raddy, and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast-style video that I do for you guys. Every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, we talk all about fruits, vegetables, how to grow those things, and how to use them in the kitchen, and the really rare stuff, the things you probably have never heard of, you know, not your typical things like bananas or oranges, you know, some things that are really interesting that you probably didn't know. In this episode, we're actually going to talk about figs. I love to grow figs, as probably if you guys have been listening to any of the episodes thus far, you certainly know that. Um, I also want to give you guys a little bit of an update, so let's get into that. Um, where are we at in the season so far? Well, today is March uh, 6th, so right now we're starting seeds. Uh, we've talked about in some of the YouTube videos that I do, because uh, normally... If you guys are, are watching me on any of the podcasting websites right now, uh, or listening to me on the podcasting websites right now, um, we're normally on YouTube and we do all kinds of different videos. And so far we've been putting out lots of content about starting seeds. We've talked a lot about fig cuttings. Uh, we are starting a couple fig cuttings actually to this day. Um, we are going to be starting a few in this next upcoming week and that will pretty much be it for the year in terms of when I start them and at what date I start them at. Um, and then pretty soon, sometime around you know mid-May, maybe even the first of May, after our frosts have, uh, have passed, we actually may put them outside as tender young trees. We may give them a little bit more time inside. I'm not entirely sure just yet, but that is the plan. Uh, you know, some of the seeds I've been starting have really gone really well. Um, I have huge trays now. I've got two trays of 128 plants that are all going to be transplanted out relatively soon. Um, the expected transplant date is sometime around March 15th. I think that's probably the earliest I can get a lot of these cool, loving, hardy crops out into the garden without having them die on me. Uh, we are going to put down the row cover. Normally, I would say... April 1st is a great date for this, and on average, that's normally when I would do this, but we're going to see if we can squeeze out an extra couple weeks. We also have things, because we started them from seed this year, um, our cool living crops should be roughly about a month earlier than they were last year, and that's really, really exciting. We've also got a lot of things out there, or that are going to be out there, that uh, we didn't have last year. You know, things that are really early as well. Um, things like radishes, we did have some turnips last year, things like carrots, you know, we've really got some early vegetables out there uh, that should really put out a, a whole decent amount of food sometime in May. And that's really impressive because, and that's really important, I think, for our health, uh, for our diets. You know, we've, I've been eating lots of sugar this whole winter time, lots of processed foods that I really shouldn't have. And uh, to be honest with you, if I can just garden all year round, I'd be so much healthier. But, you know, it is what it is, and now we're finally going to get out there really soon and get this whole process going. Um, one other thing I want to mention is that um, the website is up and running. And the website we've talked about, I think in prior videos, but the website we've had to recreate, we changed over from Weebly to now Wix, and we've got our website here, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. And that's where the new blog post is that I'm going to talk about in this video. So if you are interested and want to see this blog post as you listen, I suggest you guys go here and click on the link to today's blog post. Uh, it's titled Fig Tree Timeline, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And that's where we're located in the Philadelphia area here. And this is the timeline that I recommend for all of you guys. Um, no matter where you live, I try to get these particular dates, not necessarily uh, accurate to your location, but I gave you guys interesting temperature ranges that I think are pivotal. So if you can follow the temperatures, you can fill, follow the general guidelines, you can kind of fill in the dates to your location and to your season and to your length of your season. Um, now, let's start out today actually sometime around March 1st this is really when we start thinking about the fig shuffle and this is also something that's really going on in my mind and kind of what's happening in the garden in the orchard right now is that we're turning on the heater in the greenhouse um, actually tonight last night and tomorrow night 
is going to be really cold and I expect this is probably going to be the really last deep freeze and really just harsh weather that we get um, probably till next year, you know, um, maybe till next December or something like that. This is really going to be the end of it. I ex really expect things to really warm up after this point. Um, so what this means is that, you know, this gives us a few different things to consider. Well, if our trees are, are dormant, what I'm expecting to do is sometime around March 15th, April 1st, I'm actually going to be moving a lot of my dormant trees onto the patio and kind of um, getting them acclimated to the outdoor conditions, really rehydrating them is what I um, is what I refer to this process as. And I'm just kind of skipping ahead here, but on April 1st is what I recommend is to start the rehydration process. Getting our dormant trees that really haven't been watered at all. Uh, we're going to mention and talk about what you know what the watering regimen is in the dormancy period here. But uh, for myself, I haven't watered my dormant figs one little bit, and it really makes things I think to rehydrate them, to really get them adjusted to the outdoor conditions. It really helps them easily transition and more naturally transition out of dormancy it's just for whatever reason certain years some potted fig trees just don't wake up and it seems to take them much longer and they they actually get held back quite a bit in the season because of that it's not usually the end of the world but it's something that can really help improve um, your productivity so you know if you're you're really obsessed with this this is something you certainly want to do otherwise I'd recommend just putting out your trees like I have done in prior years putting them out there on you know the day of your last frost and that's really what's recommended in, in general terms this is a bit of an experiment but overall the trees and fig trees in general just stay dormant longer um, even though they are potted and they are gonna be on the patio they are gonna have access to a lot more heat they should stay dormant for quite some time and really not wake up um, prior to a, a frost so uh, that's really the goal is to keep them dormant until the, the, the frosts have officially passed and then once that happens sometime around late April May 1st they should already be woken up at that point and it should be a real smooth and quick transition uh, the only thing you need to pay attention here is that you got to keep them above 17 degrees Fahrenheit if things start to dip below 17 degrees Fahrenheit the root zones of these potted figs are you know they're they're getting hit with that temperature and it's more harsh and the roots can't really handle those temperatures so it's really recommended that no matter where you live no matter what time of the year you do this make sure that temperatures are going to stay above 17 degrees Fahrenheit it's that simple otherwise move them back into your storage area and that's kind of what we're doing now as well is that we're trying to do the fig shuffle and what's the fig shuffle you take them out of your dormant um, storage area Put them on the patio open up the garage door turn on the heater you know kick on some kind of temperature that's really going to wake these things up and give them that early start a lot of people put them in their windows take them up out of the basement and put them in their house and their windows and their sunny windows you know there's a lot of different ways you can wake these things up it's really not rocket science you just got to figure out where somewhere warm that i can put them now, and if your tree is going to be woken up and it has leaves on it, it even has the buds starting to swell, they're starting to get green and larger and turn into stems and leaves, you don't want to let those plants get hit with anything less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, especially a frost. The other thing I want to mention here is that if you have trees, let's say in your house or let's say in your storage area that really are not getting full outdoor sun, they're not getting that direct eight hours of light you need to transition them outside and into that eight hours of direct light very carefully and very slowly if you do not do this you will regret it I've done it numerous years uh, and it just really puts those plants those plants in particular back because you end up getting sunburn on the leaves and on the stems it's really just not a good thing and it's really a, a practice that you know we want to get them out there as early as we can as quick as we can but really, should, we should be patient with this and really give them some extra time to adjust to the sunlight. Don't, do not rush the process. Okay, so 
you know, that's pretty much what we're doing right now, right? And that's the first part of the timeline. That's the first thing you guys should be thinking about at this time of the year. About two months, month and a half, about a month before your last frost. Or in relation to those temperatures I mentioned, either 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 17 degrees Fahrenheit, that's really what you should concern yourself with. This is also the time to start doing any root pruning. If you have uh, potted figs that have been in those containers for a number of years, there's a very good chance that they are uh, root bound. And figs are super vigorous, so you know they get their roots wrapped around real quick in a very short period of time, and they often go around so many times that um, it could end up inevitably killing the tree. Um, and it's just a good process to do this every other year. You know, if you're up potting them, you don't have to do this, but um, you know, this is a good practice for those of you guys who have been doing this for a long time to get into that habit. You need to make sure though that if you are root pruning your containered figs, they must be dormant. Do not do this when the tree is woken up. Now, some other things I recommend around this time of the year is to use dormant oil. So this is really important um, to get rid of overwintering pests. Um, you know, things like scale, mites, really like to uh, overwinter on fig trees and really are a bit of a detriment to the growth and the vigor and the productivity of our fig trees. And you may not see them. You may not even know they're there. If you have a lot of them, you have them spaced very closely. Uh, they can certainly become a problem. And I would say either a dormant oil or a horticultural oil is just a very good practice to use in the beginning of your season, in the dormancy process, or if it's a horticultural oil, even throughout the year to help get rid of any pests that are really becoming a problem. Um, of course, you don't want to spray this when the bees are out and on the, uh, the flowers of your trees, but this stuff is mostly um, organic, and I know the horticultural oil that I use is actually pretty much crude oil. So, um, you know, it's just something that really smothers these soft body insects uh, and it doesn't really harm bees and such like that things that are going to pollinate the flowers uh, but obviously of course be careful read the labels of these things etc uh, you know now we're on May 1st in my area so we've gotten through the March 1st period we've gotten through April 1st now we're on March 1st this is the average last frost date in my area as we mentioned prior um, at this point, all the trees should be moved out on the patio um, or wherever it is that you're going to keep them for the entirety of the year. You know, And of course, I mentioned here, transition leafed out trees slowly to full sun. We talked about that. Also on this date is also really important to do. There's two extremely important things to do which are immensely important to your success, especially if you live in a short season climate like me. Figs are really not supposed to grow here. They actually are well adapted. Uh, but for the most part, you got to give them a little bit of help. And if you're not willing to do certain things, you're going to have a really weak crop every single year. And you're going to blame it on the weather. When in reality, there's actually some things you guys can do yourself. And if you do them, you won't regret it. Well, the first thing I recommend is to fertilize well. And that's the first day of the season after that frost is gone. Um, I would also recommend removing any mulch that's going to help raise the temperature of the root zones of our plants the faster uh, the I should say the faster the metabolism and the more warmth we have the better off these trees will be the better head start they will get uh, and really get going later on in the season we're going to talk about why that's so important in just a moment we also want to apply any fertilizers that we're going to use right here whether that's organic if we're using organic fertilizers, those can be applied actually before uh, we actually put them out in the patio because those take a bit longer and can take a bit longer to break down. Um, we do want to apply our synthetic fertilizers at this time. I usually like to apply um, some slow release on this day as well as some fast release on this day. Also, any micronutrients. I apply micronutrients every single year especially calcium, but you really want to cover the full basis here. Things like boron are really overlooked. Uh, magnesium is also very important. Um, some other things I really recommend are diatomaceous earth and also mycorrhizal inoculants. And this is extremely, I really do believe these two things are really, really important. 
Uh, if you want to hear more about fertilizers and my thoughts on these different things, you can definitely go over to the YouTube channel. And really on the homepage, if you're not a subscriber, is the video I do on um, fertilizers. So it talks all about that, growing all kinds of fruit trees with these different fertilizers. We talk all about that, even the soil. Um, and I would just mix all that in as best you can. Now, the next thing that's extremely important is thinning new shoots. And thinning new shoots is extremely important, especially in containers. This will greatly increase your productivity. I get some people that really don't understand this, and it's very, it is kind of a bit contradictory because if I'm thinning new branches that are trying to leaf out and bud out from the tree, um, isn't that going to reduce photosynthesis? Don't we want more leaves? More leaves equals more energy, right? Well, if we're doing this from the beginning of the year, before leaves have even formed, we're, we're seeing where the buds are popping out of the wood, and we're selecting which of those which of those buds we want actually to form into new branches. Figs form on new branches. So if we can control where the branches go and the amount of branches, this will greatly increase your productivity. Why? Because if we thin them out and we have less of them, we're actually going to have thicker branches and stronger branches so that when it comes time to the next part here, when we do our pinching, um, we can we're going to have the branches that is going to be able to support that fruit. It's really, really important. Um, so that brings us really to the next step here, May 15th to June 15th. I even kind of do this into July 1st. And actually, that's the second step now that I'm, uh, I'm mentioning. I'm skipping a step here. But sometime around June 1st to July 1st, we pinch off the tips. And this is very, very important for inducing main crop, especially in somewhere around me where we have a short season. I only have about 180 days of frost-free days. So getting my fruits, my figs to fruit in 180 days is quite a challenge. And without pinching, um, you're just not going to get a full crop. You know, um, in addition to this, I'm really trying to get my fruits to form before that rain comes in. We have a, we have a rainy fall. We have a rainy September. So getting those fruits really before about September 15th on average in my area is going to be very beneficial. And normally after you pinch, it takes about 90 days for those fruits to be ripe. So I would just recommend go, go and watch those videos I've done on pinching. They certainly will make this topic a lot more clear and concise. But really what you need to pay attention to is those two white or red dots that are on, located on the wood above the leaf stem and it's the point in which the leaf stem connects to the main branch look right above that and you'll see the nodes that's where the fig comes out of and the new branch if we take off that apical bud it'll basically send a signal to the plant and say hey it's time to fruit now just to rewind just a, just a little bit here around may 15th to june 15th is really when our temperatures start to warm up May 1st is still quite cold. It, historically, it definitely has been quite cold. The ground doesn't really warm up all that much. Um, this is really the recommended you know, time of the year that you plant things like corn, you know, things that need a, a warmer soil like beans, you know, even your tomatoes and your, your peppers, things that really need that warmer soil temperature to really grow. Well, it's the same thing with figs because they are a subtropical species. And it's really important to have that sap flow really flowing strong. Um, this is the time of the year when I recommend up potting, planting trees in the ground, uh, begin your outdoor rooting. You can also graft at this time of the year and air layer. You know, it's really important to have those temperatures at the soil level to have risen significantly. I also recommend stake your young trees, air layers, and grafts just to help support them throughout the year. You want to do that early as you can. Um, so we have basically thinned our fruits. We fertilized well. We've also removed the mulch. We're going to get back to that in just a moment. We pinched the fruits and now our fruits have formed. And as soon as our fruits have formed sometime around, you know, maybe mid June, July, we're really going to pay attention to watering. And this is kind of where the mulch comes in. We want to add back in that mulch because we actually want to cool the soil temperatures down. Um, sometime around July 1st, things get real hot. 
And if things are too hot, especially at the soil level, when temperatures at the root zones are 95 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, fig trees will actually cease growth. And it'll seem like they have stalled. It'll seem like they're actually dormant. It seems like there's something wrong with them, like they need more water. Maybe they need more fertilizer. I get this question every year. It's happened to me my first year. Um, and I'll never, never forget what I did to solve this was just to put mulch, I would say two inches at, at minimum on the tops of the pots. And that really cools down the soil. I also recommend doing the same thing if you're in ground trees, you know, remove that mulch early on in the season and then bring it back. You know, we want to conserve moisture at different times of the year in others we really don't. Um, so now here's the thing here. We want to reduce watering at this point too. So yes, things have warmed up. Um, at this point in the year, my soil is actually still pretty moist. We have heavy clay, about 40 inches of rain annually. This past year we've had 100 inches of rain. I have rain, I have so much water in my soils right now that we probably won't dry out till maybe August. You know, if we were to have a drought the entirety of the summer, the entirety of the spring, we would probably be all right well into August, maybe even September, who knows. And I can just guarantee that the more you water your figs as the figs have formed or after the figs have formed, you're going to reduce the quality. You're going to lose some bricks. You're going to lose some sugar content. The more water they have sucked up, the plant sucks up from the roots, and then they store that in the trunks, in the leaves, it gets released through the leaves, but it's also stored in the figs themselves. And when you harvest the figs, if you've watered too much, you certainly recognize a fig that has been overwatered versus a fig that has been basically deficit irrigated, which is simply a term to kind of water your plants as needed. Keep them just enough to be happy and healthy and that's it. Any of that excess is really going to add in to the figs themselves and really make them uh, a bit bland, you know, a bit watery. So that's a big tip and I think it's overlooked. Um, the mulch is actually going to help conserve that moisture and really keep the moisture level at a constant amount. I know that really helps regulate soil moisture. So. A huge, huge tip is that mulch. Do not forget it if you are taking it off. This is the first year that I'm really going to take it off and then reapply it later in the year because I really do believe it really does make a huge difference in temperature and uh, also that's, that moisture, that soil moisture regulation is extremely, extremely important. Um, that's exactly why I mulch just about every single thing I have, whether it's in a pot or in the ground. Now the next step here is about August 1st and this is really when our first fruits of the year are going to be ripe. Um, now these are the earliest, earliest varieties. We could have some Breba that maybe have formed in July but at this point in time it's a really great idea to stop all fertilizer. At this point in the year if you are fertilizing past this point you're going to get a lot of excess growth that you don't want that's inevitably not going to harden up in time uh, for that upcoming frost that happens sometime in November. And that new growth is really just gonna get hit hard. It's not gonna harden up in time. You're gonna have crappy quality cuttings. You're gonna have a tree that really didn't like what you just did to it. Um, overall, it's just a really bad practice. We just don't want our trees growing in September, October, and of course, November. Um, of course, they're gonna, it's going to happen, right? They're going to be growing in August. They're going to be growing probably midway through September. But any, any growth past mid-September in my area is really going to be bad. It's not going to harden up in time. I would reduce water even further. It's really important to cease fertilizer but also decrease the watering as well because that water and that fertilizer is really what helps these things grow. Um, I'd also recommend that as you're harvesting your figs, your first figs of the year, just add protection as needed. You know, um, use patience when picking. The longer these things can hang on the tree, the tastier they will be, I guarantee it. Um, some of them have even been able to, uh, to dry or semi-dry in my climate. 
even with the amount of rain we get, at that stage they are just incredibly flavorful and it's a fig that really changes your life and <laughs> that's a real a fruit that will change your life because there's fruits out there you taste them and you're just in awe and then you go nuts you, you go like me and you start what you want to grow every single thing you can you start a podcast on growing fruits and now everyone's listening to you so you know it really does start with that one fruit that really just blows you away and makes you become obsessed so um, if you need to protect them obviously do that I, re I suggest bird netting or insect netting organza bags are really nice for wrapping individual figs I also recommend the there's like a tape that people use for for athletes and in sports injuries um, you can get that that uh, medical tape and kind of tear it off it's white stick it on the bottom of the eye and cover that eye if you have a really a variety with a large eye gets really prone to insects or fermentation you know that's a really good option for you guys that have that have that problem okay so now we're in September to sometime in October 1st you know we want to reduce watering even more again we want to stop all growth at this point um, the figs should really be ripening at this point and we've got so much rain in the season at this point we don't want to water at all in fact last year I didn't water a single potted tree until sometime around June 1st and I stopped my watering um, September 1st so for about that three months there let's see all of June all of July and all of August I was watering but uh, any other time of the year because we have so much rain I don't need to um, so it's really important to really focus on that water it's so so important I can't I can't stress it enough um, also this is the time of the year that you're kinda gonna get to see rust if you live in a humid environment with lots of disease in the area if you have rust I really recommend using a silica supplement that's the supplements we kinda talked about earlier in the year when we applied them in the beginning of the year things like diatomaceous earth or using rice holes as mulch is really gonna help with that silica that kind of helps the tree really form a natural defense against disease. Um, the other thing I recommend is really just pick up those leaves that have fallen. Um, those things can really be prone to rust that will then spread to actively growing trees or trees with growing with healthy leaves on them. All right, so now we've gotten through the fall. We're really just enjoying the fruit at this point. There's really not a whole lot going on, not a whole lot of maintenance. But now we're getting to sometime in December because um, our trees have gone dormant. Things have really cooled down. We got a couple of frosts that came in, really hit our trees, dropped the leaves, um, shocked the plant into dormancy. A lot of that sap flow has then decreased and hopefully has gone into the roots completely. And that's when we know our trees are dormant. Um, hopefully the wood is also hardened up. It's turned brown. We can then start pruning our trees. And if we want, we can use them as cuttings. We can then start the cuttings indoors or trade them, ship them, sell them, etc. Um, so it's a really great idea to prune your trees before you put them in storage. Obviously, that's optional, but it's really great to keep in mind how we're going to be thinning our branches for next year, how many fruiting branches we can have um, for next year, and how what our tree really can handle. This is a great opportunity to remember how well your tree had did that year. If maybe you had a lot of fruit left over at the end or it didn't really, maybe it produced too many fruits or maybe it didn't produce enough fruits, you kind of get a good idea of your, in your head of what this tree can handle in future years. And really that's gonna give you a good idea of the shape and exactly how many fruiting branches you wanna have for next year's main crop. Um, just a couple things you want to pay attention to here. I know I'm, I'm mentioning this in December 1st is usually when I when this happens. That's usually the date when I put all my trees into storage. But historically it's happened even prior to that. Sometime in Thanksgiving. This year we had a 13, uh, 13 degree Fahrenheit low Thanksgiving night. The year prior I think was even earlier. So it's really important to um, pay attention to the temperature. Again, when our trees are outside we do not want them to be hit with a temperature below 17 degrees Fahrenheit. 
those container trees will take damage especially at the root zone and that could potentially kill the tree so um, it's really up to you and when you guys want to prune these things again the sap flow should be limited or zero and then once that those trees are pruned and temperatures are starting to dip below 17 or even starting to dip below 20 or even in the low 20s you may want to consider okay now is the time to put them into cold storage if temperatures never dip below 17 you can leave them outside all winter so um you know that's pretty much it at that point of the year and then we get into february where i just want to make one more point and that we should be watering our dormant figs and these are the ones in the container in the containers obviously not the ones in the ground but about four inches of water per tree is really good you especially want to water the the younger trees uh, for myself I did mention this in the beginning of this video um, I did not water my trees I've done this for multiple years now I do not water them the entirety of the winter why because when I put them in storage I make sure they're mulched well right we mulch them back sometime in July 1st after our fruits have formed and then once they had formed um, we, add, we added all that mulch and that's really been conserving moisture all this time we also because we have so much rain late in the season they've been watered really well and this thing it makes you know these potted plants a lot heavier more difficult to move around but it's really important to keep them watered well so that when they go into dormancy there's no risk of them drying out uh, there's no risk of overwatering because you're not you don't need to water them right there's no leaves on the trees and if there's enough soil moisture in there that's conserved by the mulch that's not evaporating as well nearly as quickly you're just gonna have a lot easier of a time uh, and that's really just a, the easiest way to have a smooth winter time of not really worrying about your trees so that is essentially the timeline here guys if you want to see this um, this blog post again I'm gonna put this down in the description of this video but this is really on the website rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog you can go there and see this site if you guys enjoyed this one please subscribe on the YouTube channel follow me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter as well um, and also get a nice little you know subscribe to the newsletter down here um, if you guys subscribe to the newsletter you will see every new blog post that I put on the website you'll be notified you can go there and check it out you just gotta type in your email address here it's really that simple alright guys take care I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of fruit talk been really enjoying the podcast so far we've already made it over 20 weeks alright guys take care I'll catch you for tomorrow's video